Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking once more about that big upcoming cooldown to start the month of October. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. For today's comment of the day, I want to know... What is the coldest temperature you've felt so far this September, or I guess this season, this fall season that we're entering here? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know when it was and where you're at, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at just a few days ago on September 21st. That was our previous big cooldown, and the thing you need to remember is this was on September 21st. So the average temperature has is going down rapidly every few days. Your temperature is probably going down by a degree. So by the time we're at October 7th, being, being 10 degrees below average is going to mean a lot more than it did on September 21st. So I hope that makes sense. That's going to be a crucial key point to make as we enter this video as we're really rapidly entering the fall season and it's just as quickly going to enter the winter season eventually. Here's today, though, and as you can see, we have some neutral temperatures, some yellows, some lighter blues, very close to normal along most of the eastern United States. We have a very big uh, warm-up out there for the Rockies. It's been quite warm compared to normal. Uh, and then by the time we're at Sunday, September 27th, this is going to be the look far above normal temperatures for the eastern United States, and actually some below-average temperatures enter the western United States. But that's going to be very short-lived. That's going to be for the end of September. And we're going to move on to where that's going to come to a very rapid end. Now, by the time we're looking at September 28th, that's going to be a Monday, and as you can see, a huge cold front is coming through there. Those purples are indicating temperatures that are about 8 to 12 degrees below average, very far below normal. Uh, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, all the way down through Kentucky, Tennessee, the deep south there as well. You can tell that right along the cold front is where it's the most uh, potent, and then the further back you go, the closer to normal it gets. All right, and we still have those neutral temperatures along the East Coast, but you can tell that the colder temperatures are moving in by this point quite rapidly as well. And we see a big warm-up developing out there for the West Coast. That's our positive PNA developing there, and that's only going to further encourage the colder than normal temperatures for the eastern half of the United States. I've been talking about this uh, for probably over a week now. Let's take a look at Tuesday, September 29th, and by the time we reach the 29th, you can see that cooldown is becoming... Uh, pretty significant and widespread throughout the eastern half of the United States. And also we see that warm-up further building into the western United States, again, rather uh, quickly ensuring that we have a positive PNA, which is in turn going to, again, encourage that colder than normal conditions to move into the eastern United States, which it is by this point. You can see some purples mixed in there, again, which is where you're about far, far below normal. The, the deeper blues as well is going to indicate areas that are moderately below average. Let's go ahead and move it on. What we're going to do is we're going to move on towards Wednesday, September 30th, and then we're going to move through the first week or so of October, just taking a look day by day. We're going to see some very potent cold move in. So here we are by September 30th, and as you can see, we see those purples building in even further. New England is the only area in the eastern half of the United States here with any sort of significantly above normal temperatures. That's going to be quite short-lived, though. Uh, and, and we're going to see that clo we're going to see that move out. It's going to take a while, but it will eventually move out. The Ohio Valley is seeing the furthest below normal temperatures, but also the upper Midwest and the, the northern plains there as well, alongside the Great Lakes, are all seeing some pretty potent cold air. But even if you're on the East Coast, we do see those lighter blues indicating those below normal temperatures. Now, what's going to happen is we're actually going to see those slightly below normal temperatures actually become more and more potent as time moves on. So what we're going to do here is just take it to October 1st. That's going to be a Thursday, uh, and we will be officially in October. And as you can see, we're going to start October with a bang, those below normal temperatures becoming even further below normal for the East Coast. Uh, again, New England still hasn't fully transitioned to the below normal temperatures, but we do see it moving quick, closer and closer to you guys. Again, that positive PNA is still building in further for the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast as a whole there, far above normal temperatures. Uh, and through the upper Midwest, the Northern Plains, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, all seeing purples and pinks, indicating anywhere from about 12 to 20 degrees below average. Let's take it to October 2nd now, and as you can see, uh, still we're seeing those purples uh, and deeper blues along the East Coast there. New England, you're getting even, getting even closer to the below normal temperatures, and we're about to actually see it get a lot colder moving forward. 
We're gonna take a look at October 3rd, which is actually gonna be the furthest below average day we're gonna take a look at on the entire model run. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a look at October 3rd. And as you can see here, by the time we reach October 3rd, those purples and pinks just become a lot more potent, a lot further south, and they just spread a lot a larger region as a whole. Again, I keep mentioning it, but look out west. We still see that positive PNA. That's crucial because once that ends, we're going to see probably a three-day lag. So as long as that's there, the cold air is going to stay in the eastern United States. Uh, and as you can see, purples and pinks widespread. And actually, on the next frame we're going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at the actual temperature. By the way, all of these frames have been for your high temperature. Although it's a comparative to normal, so it doesn't really matter whether it's the low or the high. It's not going to really change too much. But once we look at the actual temperature, that's crucial, obviously. Uh, but purples and pinks up and down the mid-Atlantic coast. New England finally seeing mostly blues, although the main coast is still seeing uh, above normal temperatures as a whole. Uh, but we're going to actually see that eventually become blue as we move towards the fourth here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at the actual temperature for that same frame. Again, the afternoon hours of Saturday, October 3rd. And take a look at that up and down the mid-Atlantic coast, all the way down to North Carolina. 50, mid-50s, lower 50s as a high temperature. Again, we saw the same differential from normal during the mid to late portion of September, and it was, you know, 65 as a high, but now our average temperature has lowered so much because we've moved on probably two or three weeks now since that point, so you're seeing a bigger, a bigger difference when you take a look at the further below normal temperatures, even some 40s for the Great Lakes is high temperatures. It's going to be borderline moving towards cold in general. Uh, we see 50s all the way down to Oklahoma, Arkansas, even northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. This is a significant cooldown if it is to occur in this potent of a form. So yeah, very, very cold temperatures for a lot of the regions. Even, even 50s is bordering on, you know, chilly in my opinion. So that's hoodie weather right there. Uh, we're going to really rapidly move towards fall temperatures for a lot of these regions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on towards the 4th, where again we're going to see finally New England fully move into the below normal temperatures. We're going to take a look at the 5th, 6th, 7th, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the end of the model run on the ensemble model, and then we're going to pretty much close out the video after that point. So here we are taking a look at the 4th, and as you can see, it's not quite as cold, but still, those deeper blues and purples is still far below normal temperatures, and those are very widespread throughout the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, the interior northeast, the mid-Atlantic coast there, the southeast even, uh, the deep south, and especially Oklahoma and Arkansas there, where we see maybe 20 to 28 degrees below average. Very, very significant uh, cool down here we're taking a look at and it's very long-lived if you can't tell it's been through the 20 it's probably on its fifth day by the time we're looking at the fourth and still the west coast is still just far above normal so it's not going to move out anytime soon on this model we see october 5th here that's going to be a monday we still see the deeper blues and the purples are around it's a little less potent by this point but i mean it's still there uh, and it's day six on the cooldown now you can't really ask for too much with these things this is already a very very significant cooldown, just the timing of it, the, how long it lasts. And I mean, it is potent. You know, we took took a look at some days where there's 20 degrees below average, pretty widespread. So yeah, very, very significant cooldown here. Let's take it to Tuesday, October 6th now. And as you can see, we still see the deeper blues, but we do start to see some colder than normal conditions move further west down there for the four corner states in California. That could spell the beginning of the end for this cooldown, and it was never going to last forever, obviously. Uh, so it's going to end eventually. We can take a look at some warmer than normal conditions up there for the upper Midwest, which is a change. But the East Coast is still dealing with the far below normal temperatures by the sixth here on this model. And I will tell you, this is the GFS model, the GEFS model, which is the GFS ensemble model. It's different. That one takes many, many opinions and turns it into one. This one is just, I think, four different ones, so it's not as many models working together. The GEFS, the GFS Ensemble model, does not have this cooldown ending even through the end of the run. We're going to take a look at that in a second, but the GFS model, the normal GFS model, does. As we can see by the 7th, it begins to come to an end. We see those cooler than normal conditions move up through California. Uh, we still see the warmer than normal conditions in the Pacific Northwest, but I'm sure that it's coming to an end by this point. And then New England, the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley start to warm up. The Southeast holds on to the cold, which has been expected. Even the Climate Prediction Center and the CFS model call for that Southeast region to be cold pretty much throughout most of the month of October there. 
Uh, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the last frame on the GEFS model because really it does not have that pattern end. You can see the west is still very warm compared to normal, indicating a positive PNA. And the east coast is still colder than normal here by the 10th, indicating that this pattern never breaks up on this model. You can see on the GFS it was breaking up the... The four corner states in California had below normal temperatures. That is certainly not the case on this model. We'll have to see which one is right, uh, but as of right now, they definitely disagree. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, have you ever had October snowfall? And Jesse H said, definitely here in upstate New York, we almost always do. Remember when Buffalo, New York had over seven feet? I was there to help plow the highways. That was just crazy. And I do certainly remember uh, that that year. I think it was 2014 in Buffalo, New York. That was absolutely insane. I would personally love to see something like that one day. Uh, and you're very privileged to have been able to experience something of that magnitude in the weather world. All right, now for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Birds, Dan Hazard, Cindy Klein, and Mark J, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, watching the videos, liking, and, you know, always leaving a comment. I appreciate all of you. I will see you guys in the next video.